There you go, friends. Hi, Doc South saying hey and welcome. Yet another tale of woe. <laughs> Uh, not really. I, it, you may enjoy this. Uh, it, it's a pretty hot day today. Oh, it's humid. Oh, God. Tell you. Just, um, and, and well, of course, the sun's out and uh, it's I, really uh, overachieving today. And uh, for New Jersey, it's hot. Yeah, it's kind of that close New Jersey air. Yeah. And it's, uh, uh if you were on a prominent, you know, on a, prom a prominent point on a hill, on a cliff or something, uh, looking out into the distance, you'd see all this smog and not smog so much, but just hot air, inversion layers, I guess. I, I don't know, but you, you, you sort of know it when you see it. You, in New Jersey, that's a, yeah, that means you, you got a hot day coming. And, uh, yeah, break out the deodorant because you're going to need it. Yes. Uh, but, um, I'm trying to, I, on days like this, I like to think back on days when I was just so hot, I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> and I, I, can't, I came up with a memory, and a Jersey memory at that. No, I'd say perhaps one of the hottest periods in my life, I would say, would be actually when I worked out of Bernardsville, New Jersey. Bernardsville, New Jersey, at a, um, at a furniture store. I was uh, just married. Uh, maybe two or three years into the marriage uh, with my first wife, uh, Molly. And I worked for Huffman and Coos. I don't think they're around anymore. It may have been, in fact, this may be so long ago that it may have been called Huffman and Boyle. Yeah, eventually they merged with, I think Mr. Boyle left, Mr. Huffman took over, and they merged somehow with Coos Furniture. So it was Huffman Coos, I think. I don't know who bought who. I, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I think I remember asking about it and I think I was told it was none of my business, <laughs> which might be, uh, the, um, but the, uh, there was a day we had this store that was kind of built like a supermarket. I don't, it, it was built to be a furniture store. Uh, so, but it was basically the store had all sorts of like little fake rooms or, uh, recreations of rooms, let's put it that way, throughout the store. It was about one story high, big flat roof, and I'd say that store took up approximately an acre. Maybe a little less, but darn close. And uh, the odd, oddly enough, they, when they, they had all these picture windows uh, all, that surrounded the parking lot area and also that looked out onto the front, the highway, Route 202. And people would drive by and look, sometimes just get out of the car and look at the window displays. And the thing was, was those window displays couldn't open. Okay, they couldn't open. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they, they were window displays, like you'd see, you know, walking down Main Street, any town USA. Okay. Uh, there was basically the front door there was a back door, and I think there was one window in the uh, back room that could open. Other than that, and maybe one window at the office. Maybe. Other than that, yeah, pretty much pretty much, you were boxed in. Which was fine, because there was a perfectly good heater and a perfectly good air conditioner. Until one day. Oh, one awful day. <laughs> We were, we were just kind of standing around, you know, and you had to wear a coat and tie. Yeah, if you were a salesman, the ladies had to dress up fairly nice, you know, because you were dealing with, uh, you know, some reasonably ritzy people. And they expected you to look like, uh, you know, like a business person. I never really liked wearing a suit, still don't. Uh, but they, uh, but you had to. That's how it went. And, uh, but one day in, it was a day like this, nice and hot out. And all of a sudden we noticed, I don't know, we were, I remember going to the manager or hearing someone else go to the manager. Um, and, and, and we, the, the person said, uh, gee, Mr. Bowl, it, it seems, I think his last name was Bowl. Uh, it seems kind of hot in here, don't it, to you? He says, you know, I, I, I think it does. And now, I think Mr. Bowl was, uh, was a, um, 
in the Navy for quite some time. So, and he may have worked down in, you know, below decks. It didn't seem that bad to him. It's, it, you know, can get hot on a ship. And he, uh, he said, I don't know. Well, let's go check the air conditioner. We got to uh, uh, check the thermostat. Maybe someone, you know, maybe someone turned it up. I don't know. South, did you turn the heat? No, I said, no, sir. I'm feeling kind of warm, too. Man, with this tie on and everything. You just keep that tie on, young man. Yes, sir. Don't call me sir. Call me chief. Okay, he was a chief. <laughs> yeah, okay, chief. And the... Uh, <laughs> and anyway, the report back from the air conditioner, or from the, from the thermostat was... Uh, that it was uh, it, it was uh, 90 degrees in the store and the air conditioner set at 60. Mr. Bull says, let me go look at that. Oh, he looks, you know, like, like and he's, my God, you're right. What, what the, go south, go check the, uh, go, go check the fuse box. Uh, hurry. And I, I go to check the fuse box. There's, I come back and I said, the fuses look okay. None of them burn out. And the, uh, the, the one big fuse is fine. I, I think we're okay as far as fuses go. Oh, my God. Quick, up on the roof, men. And we go up on the roof. There was a hatch. And we look at the air conditioner, and it, frankly, it ain't making a sound. It's just sitting there. Just mm. like that. And we said, oh, my God, it's broken. It stopped running. Oh, what are we going to do? We'll die down there. And, and and it's it's th this heat wave is throughout the throughout the entire North Jersey uh, area North Jersey area. Where are we going to get someone to fix it? We'll we'll send uh, for maintenance uh, store maintenance. We, uh, Mr. Bull calls up the uh, store maintenance. No one can be there for three days. We're trapped, trapped like rats, and we couldn't. No, there was. A, a, <laughs> I think. I think the big boss got on the line and said, you men stay there for crying out loud. You can maybe let one of the women go, but other than that, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, uh, what, what would I say? Very chivalrous. Yes. The rest of you guys are in there. You keep your coats and ties on. I want a good uh, presence when the customers come walking in. And, uh, oh, yes, sir. Oh, and <laughs> Mr. Bowles puts down the phone, starts cussing. And uh, with, well, that was it. We were trapped. That sun started beating down. Yeah. And, you know, we started thinking of all those uh, desert movie scenes where someone's stranded and they're crawling. Oh, oh. And people were starting to, they'd walk into the store, turn around and walk right out. Yeah, it was, honestly, it was like walking into a blast furnace. My guess is that it got to about 110 in that store. Because the one thing that did happen was the candles, that because they had candles on all the, uh, like, coffee tables and the uh, end tables and stuff. And on all the lights had to be on on those end tables, too. Yes. So it just, just added to the fun. But those candles went like that. And then pretty soon, they just, you know, like in a horror movie, they just dissolved away. And there was blobs of wax on the, uh, on the coffee tables and end tables. Oh my God, it was so hot. And people had walked. <laughs> and, and, and again, we had to stay well dressed. And, uh, and people would uh, pull up to the parking lot and they'd see us in the window clutching our throat, going, putting up signs saying, Water, please bring water. <laughs> there was no, the air conditioners wouldn't work in the air. And the, uh, and, and the refrigerator, the store refrigerator broke down. There was nothing we could do. Oh my God, it was so awful. I come back home. I remember poor Molly sees me and says, "What is with you? You look, like, you, what? what I, no, no air conditioning in the store." She says, "Oh my God, you're calling in sick. You're gonna call in sick." I said, "No, I can't. We'll be fired. They knows we're healthy." Oh God! And honestly, by the by the third and oh, and, by, and we found out on the third day that the guys wouldn't be there till sometime later next week yeah oh it was a nightmare oh it was so hot and even though i was a boiler maker i worked on roofs uh i think that might have been the worst heat at least on a roof at least on a roof 
you could uh, you could uh, you know you could find a shady spot you could just wear a t-shirt you could just wear you could take all your clothes off for all they cared up on the roof you'd be okay and there is usually a breeze and you can usually find somewhere that was shady okay and uh, in a boiler room well what you could do is just take a take a water hose make sure it's not the steam hose and uh, and and just soak yourself down you know to, and you climb into the firebox when your clothes are dry you come out and soak yourself down again and you'd be fine greasy kid stuff compared to being that in that furniture store that oh oh it was so bad I don't know what ever happened to that store I you know I haven't been down that way gee I used to be there every day to work but I can't remember I don't know if that building's even there anymore it was right off of route 202 and uh and I, I thought the road into Basking Ridge on the corner of 202 and whatever road that was. Uh, oh, but it was so hot. Oh. <laughs> and no, sales were not good. Sales were not good. People would walk in and they just have to say, look, we'll come back. Give us a brochure. This, this is, oh my God, how are you guys standing this? It was like, it would be like working in a steel mill, only you got to wear a suit, a, a, a coat and a tie. Yeah. Oh, really bad. Well, anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. We'll see you later, friends. Thank you, and uh, stay cool. Bye now.